Do I have to give my name and affiliation like I did for basketball? Or, okay, we're, we're good. Okay. I'll start with Connor. Since we didn't get to, we didn't get a chance to talk to you last night. I mean, Saturday night it was kind of rushed. Just um, SEC champion, your your first first championships out of ten. I mean, I, I, did you have these kind of expectations? Did it exceed your expectations? And now that it's in the, you know, you've had a little bit of time to think about it. What was what was that all like? Um, I think that these expectations weren't a thing for me. I all I really thought about was the team and like. The team was, was what was on my mind the whole entire, like, day. And honestly, the whole week leading up to it was just about the team and, like, what we were going to do that night. So, I mean, beam happened, but I'm just more excited about um, being team, like, SEC champions. That's awesome. Um, Y'all you were on all, all night. It was, it was a tough – it was tough competition. I mean, it was – you were nip and tuck with Alabama, and then Kentucky, and you all know, fell behind but, uh, just a fraction. But going to Florida, just talk about the confidence you all had as a group going to Florida. And you all can both answer this. The confidence you all had going to Florida, uh, this is where you want to finish. This is where you all uh, you are the best in the country at. So how, how did you all feel going into that final ro rotation? Um, I think everybody, um, not just the floor team, felt super confident going into floor. No matter the score, I think we've proved ourselves week in and week out to feel that confident in ourselves on that event. And so it was more about just having fun um, and treating it like a Friday night in the PMAC. It was so many LSU fans in there, so we just wanted to have a floor party like we have every week. Oh, I was just going to say the same thing. Every time we go to floor, it's just like we're having a party. And nobody even thinks about it's a competition anymore. It's right. just every day in practice we have a party. And so when we go to floor, me, it's like we're having so much fun, we don't even realize we're competing anymore. So Connor, you're going into your first uh, postseason in college gymnastics. Kai, you missed last year, obviously, with your Achilles injury. Just what are you all looking to do, and how excited are you for this opportunity? Um, I'm really excited. I think our team is in a great spot. Um, and like I just said, we've proved ourselves and just gotten better each week. So I'm very excited to see what this postseason holds, starting with regionals. Um, I think we're going to do some more great things, so I can't wait. I'm also super excited. I think we're just building our confidence, me after me, and definitely after SCCs, our confidence is super high right now. So just keep that going into regionals and just doing the same thing we've been doing every weekend. Kyle, you obviously had the, uh, the final floor routine to close it out. Mm -hmm. uh, did Jay tell you anything before you went out there, or did you, he just let you go? Uh, he just told me to be my normal and have fun, which is basically what he tells me every single time. Um, and yeah, I was really excited. I didn't know what the scores or anything was looking like. I knew my team had just done five great floor routines before me, so I really was just trying to soak in the moment um, and enjoy it. Because competing in New Orleans, like at SECs, that doesn't happen all the time. So I really just wanted to take in the moment and have fun. And Connor, uh, how, is it, how important is it for you guys to not look too far ahead like later in this tournament, like to some of the other teams you guys can play? You guys could run into Arkansas or Kentucky, like teams that you've played before. Mm, I feel like we don't, even, we don't even look at the teams. Jay tells us all the times it's not about who you're competing against in the moment, it's who you're competing against all around the country. And like, that's what we think constantly. So just going to the Arkansas and like remembering that we're competing against the whole country, not just the teams that are there, and just doing the same thing that we've, be, that we've been doing. I know everybody kind of starts fresh in the postseason, but earning that two seed, um, you know, what does that show about this team? Um, that means a lot for us. I think it shows just the work um, and the effort that we've put in up until this point um, to earn that spot and to be the number one seed at the regional that we're going to. Um, so we don't take it lightly, but again, like you said, everybody kind of starts fresh, so we're going to stick to us, stick to our normal, and like Connor just said, um, compete against everybody in the country, not just everybody at the Arkansas Regional. You both keep saying about you're not competing against everybody, but looking at that regional, you have Arkansas and Kentucky, especially Kentucky, a team you were neck and neck with at mm -hmm. SEC championships and lost to at home. Is there a little bit more added energy to this regional, or do you feel like it's extra difficult this year? Um, I don't think there's anything added. We always try and say, um, not to make any meat more than it has to be. So again, we're just going to stick to us, stick to what has worked, and go do our normal because we know our normal is enough. Um, yes, we're just going to stick to what's been working for us. 
Yeah, on Friday after the win, you had mentioned that that team could have done better. Mm -hmm. What have you discussed with your teammates already to improve? Um, well, we're about to go into a team <laughs> meeting um, in about an hour, so that's when we'll discuss all that. But I think everybody knew um, that we could have done better. Obviously, the win was great, and we were super excited, and we celebrated that um, because that was a big accomplish accomplishment for everybody on our team. Um, but we see each other every single day in practice do these great things. So we all know deep down that we could have given more, and that's our goal going into postseason, to con continue to build our confidence and consistency to have – a full, like, a full complete meet. Mm -hmm. Retweet. <laughs> Honor, obviously, uh, before you came here, you represented the United States in events, so that's a team kind of thing, but how is this, as, as you've, you've gone through the whole season now, how has this been different? What, how is the, do you find the collegiate team aspect like, and, and how does it help you, and how, how, does, how does it appeal to you if it does? Um, it helps me so much. Honestly, Saturday night was the most fun I've ever had at a competition in my entire life. And just that was so fun. Like, I can't even, like, think about me competing. Um, but I also, like, take my experience from, like, going out international. And I, like, picture the arena. And, like, that arena on Saturday was almost, like, the same that it would be, like, at championships or something. So, like, it honestly helps me with my confidence when I am competing. Just, like, taking myself into my elite moment when I salute and then when I finish, and then I'm back having a party on the floor after with the team. So it's just like, I kind of mix in both of it. And that like college team really helps me just because we do have so much fun and like I can really like let loose. For Connor, just as a freshman, you never really looked phased out there during like before any or after any events. Just how do you stay so calm in big moments like last or on Saturday? I think it is just like going back to my elite um, career and just everything that I've done there has helped me with here now because it is a lot of pressure competing like six up five count right mm -hmm. <laughs> six up five count like it is a lot of pressure going up there but then like I've also been in other pressure situations which I just take myself back to what I think about and like it's just gymnastics in the end and I think about that too after competing nearly every single week for the whole season, how important is this two-week break in between now and regionals? I think it's going to be really important for us to just rest up as much as we can, um, do all the recovery that we can so that our bodies can feel good going into regionals and that two-day competition. So I think that's going to be um, a big priority for us is to just get all the rest and recovery that we can. Connor, I remember this comment Jay made um, about like whenever you're about to go into a routine, he just like he knows that you just get in your flow state and he just lets you go. He doesn't like really say anything to you. How do you get into that flow state? How do you get into that mindset before going out there? I have no idea. It just happens. Honestly, I feel like everybody just stops talking to me after warm up and they know I'm in my like zone and I just lock in and then I'm unlocked and then the next event I'm locked again. So I don't really know how it happens. It's just habit at this point. Thank you. Lunch. Found it in the basket over there. Mm hmm. Okay. What's that? Ready? Uh, great, obviously. Great. Uh, pleased with everything, pretty much, that, that we just came through. It was a great shot in the arm for this team to. To go to New Orleans and to perform the way they did and to and to win that thing, I think it was just validating. I think it's one thing when you know you have a team capable. When you're on the team and you know you're capable of doing it, it's another thing to actually do it. And when you do it, it should it should create an increased level of confidence uh, in themselves where they're not pressing trying to do it now. And and I think. 
you know, that's one of the hardest parts about, you know, having a championship culture is, is getting over that hump and, and winning it and then, and then being able to maintain that culture. So certainly a step in the right direction. The fans were great. The atmosphere was awesome. We had a quote unquote tailgate at, up near champions plaza or whatever at the superdome and gosh it felt like there was a thousand people in there when we came through and that was a big shot in the arm it was just the energy was energy was right and you could just feel it and we were we were very confident all the way through um, the whole competition so i just feel grateful and blessed to coach this group and um and so far uh, things are going well I can't imagine y'all have ever gone into NCAAs with this high a NQS or RQS or whatever. I mean, I, like you say, you can't play defense, and obviously yeah. there's another school is having some good scores as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I mean, really, and, and yet you, you said that you, and everyone says there's some some place you can improve here or there. But but you feel like y'all have gotten through a little, you know, maybe turn. I hate to say turn a corner, but with the confidence that comes with performing at a high level. Y'all have had so many great performances all season long. Do you think that maybe y'all are getting in a little different place in, in terms I of mindset? I think so. I think we are. I, but, you know, you've you, you got to temper that kind of conversation with we don't take anything for granted, you know. But I certainly believe that it, it helps every time we have that level of success and that it bolsters our confidence. Um, and when you talk about that meat not being perfect, there's no such thing as a perfect meat. I don't, you know. No such thing, um, and if that's if that's going to become our standard, that's I guess that means we're doing a lot right. Um, but but I think certainly we did some things better in the training days leading up, and and even in warmups than we did. We landed bars better. I mean, we wired every landing, and I went in the locker room going, "Well, <laughs> so that might have been too good." You know, sometimes sometimes doing it that well can you can try to duplicate something and that's a little bit of a trap mindset too but they <clears throat> the thing was is that we were solid on and and just really solid on the first three events and and um so they never got really rattled it was a tight meet from the jump we, after rotation one we were tied with somebody and after rotation two we were tied with somebody else and um after rotation three i think we were tied no kentucky was ahead of us so um but we, but I think there was a that that rotation worked well for us because floor we know it's not a secret what kind of floor team we are and we knew, I knew that if it was close and we were going to floor at the end, it, we the chances are we were gonna we were gonna wire that thing and be able to close it out. So um, it's a great great rotation for us for sure. So with the regional, y'all play on the fourth, and then would it be the fifth or the sixth, like back to back days? Or you have uh, no, it's not back to back days. It's um, there's a day off in between. Yeah. You have to you have to advance to the second day. You have to be a top two in your session to advance to the second day, <clears throat> which would be the round of sixteen. So just, I mean, obviously that would be the shortest amount of time between meets y'all have all season. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm sure your team's prepared, but how do you think they're gonna be able to deal with going back to back in three days? Yeah, I think we'll be fine. We do that. We train for that all year long. We do things. We do full inner squads the day before home meets. We do uh, basically meet run-throughs um, the day before we travel, and there's the one day off in between. So we've trained back-to-back -back days, and we've trained for day off in the middle. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a big deal um, really for us it shouldn't be um we, we've been managing our recovery days which is what those off days in between will look like with a from a physical perspective in terms of the treatments and the things we do from a um, maintenance perspective getting their bodies moving but just kind of rolling out getting a good stretch doing the things we need to do to um and getting a massage and all the all the stuff that um that we do all year long so I think we're prepared for that. Um, we're going to mimic that pattern this week as much as possible. Um, and we'll train Thursday off Friday and then go again Saturday and just kind of uh, mimic that a little bit. Not not right down to the fact that we do a full inner squad necessarily, but we're going to keep the group together and try to create good energy and, and, um, and just mimic it as much as we can from a timing perspective. Uh, what are your initial takeaways from your region? 
I mean, there's no such thing as a uh, really. I mean, if the, with this format, um, there's no such thing as a as a easy region or a. Um, you know, we've got some familiar faces. Obviously, we've seen Arkansas, we've seen Kentucky. Um, um, I don't know if that provides anybody any advantage. Again, you know, you go back to the conversation. There's no defense, so. We know that Kentucky is an extremely capable team and can do great things, and Arkansas will be at home. I think three seeds that are at home are always dangerous. They always seem to find a way to get in, and uh, not always, but but it's a regular occurrence. You saw that with Denver last year when we were out at Denver, and um, so it'll be it'll be a good environment. Um, but this this format that we have now is great for the sport in some ways. It's also um, it's also tough. I mean, it's it's almost harder to get to the national semifinal than it is to um, exist there once you're there. It just is uh, it's tough because we've concentrated everything down to four regionals. And so uh, you look around the country, there's three or four teams in every region that have a legitimate shot of, of, of advancing all the way to, to Fort Worth. So... <clears throat> I like it. Uh, the travel is easy. It's familiar to us. A lot of the kids on our team have competed. We've never competed in Bud Walton Arena, which is where it'll be this time. We're usually in Barnhill, but um, but as far as the area and the campus, and I don't know if we've gotten hotel assignments or anything like that. So there, there's familiar. It'll 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 be it'll be a good spot for us. We just again, it's just about us staying to staying on message and focusing on the five minutes in front of our face and not getting too far ahead of ourselves. Coach, you've competed in April before, so this isn't really new to you. But for people like Kai and Connor, like, is there anything different about this time of year, like the preparation, the day-to-day -day preparation? Is there something you're telling the players, or is oh. it just about staying the course? The the difference is that le this time of year, less is more from a physical standpoint. What we want is to come into practice, be very efficient, um, not not have to do an awful lot because this time of year, every every team's got bodies that are hurting and aching and. Uh, you know, you feel like you're holding it together with band-aids and duct tape sometimes, but they. You, so you want to do you want to do less physically, but you also want them to complete when they finish every practice. I want them to feel like they were successful. It should be about building confidence, building that that mindset, and and creating the good energy in the gym and and um, and pouring into each other as we're in practice. So we'll make some shifts and do some more group oriented things, but the idea is to kind of ease back a little bit on the physical part and really focus on just keeping them firing between the ears and, and growing in their confidence. So it's a little bit of a shift, but but not an awful lot. We, we, you don't want to completely take them out of their pattern physically either. So um, it, it's just a, a little bit of a less is more kind of mentality this time of year. I think the rested teams do better uh, this in April. I think teams with fresh legs generally – do better. If you looked at us last year with everything we went through and we got to the finals, you could tell by the time we got into the finals, we looked tired. I mean, it was it, we were at the end of the line. We were empty in the tank. And and fortunately right now we're not in in that place at the moment, but we're, you know, we're just going to try to manage that. The girls were kind of saying this is a blank slate. Is that kind of the mindset you're instilling in them headed into regionals? Yeah, it is a blank slate. Uh, the rules are designed as such. It's not like baseball or basketball or or softball or other sports where if you're a top seed, you get to host, or you're a top seed and you've earned it all year, you get to decide what rotation you get and everything. It's a bone of contention for me. It always is with our at our convention that we don't operate that way. We draw things out of a hat, and so – We'll start on vault the first day, I guess, and if we advance, then the second day we start on beam. So it, it, there's no real advantage to being a, a one seed. The only advantage that exists at this point is if you're a host because you're on your equipment, you're in your environment, you know, that's where that exists. And so, you know, I'd like to see us go to a different model if we could go to neutral sites because the parity is so, so high in our sport right now. If we could go to neutral sites, an east and a west, and run two different – regionals there where you got a Thursday Saturday regional and a Friday Sunday regional and mimic you know mirror that on, on the other side of the country I think that would um, that would be beneficial or 
do what baseball does or, you know, other sports that, you know, if you, you earn that through your regular season in QS and if you're able to host, you host. If, it, if you're not able, it goes to the next school uh, in, terms of, in terms of that. Um, but, you know, that's a conversation for another time, and it's, it's happened over and over and over again. It, it's hard to get any real groundswell of support for, for, uh, for my opinion, is not the most popular. I'll just say that. Talking to uh, Tiffany Daniels with the SEC and yeah. Jay Cicero with the New Orleans Sports Foundation. It sounded like both are very eager for the championships to go back to New Orleans. Did you get any sense of that while you were down there? Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, you think you'll be back sooner than, than later? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what year they're talking about. Um, we're probably looking at at least 27 before it would come back, I guess, if we keep doing this sort of three-city pattern we've been on. I know we've been looking at other towns, too, and the conference has. Um. You know, I'd like to see us do a three-year deal with a, with a city, whether that's New Orleans or, or Orlando or Tampa or Nashville doesn't seem to have much of an appetite for it because they already have the basketball uh, tournament and the, the Predators would have to give up their arena. But a city like that, a destination city, NBA or NHL-type arenas that, you know, have all the amenities, have the locker rooms necessary, have the infrastructure in place, and we're showing that we can sell the tickets you know, if we're in those types of cities where people can go and bring their family for a long weekend and have other things to do. That's why New Orleans is such a great site for it. And um, so, I would, I, you know, I've, I've made that known to anyone uh, who's asked, and including the, sport, the, the Sports Foundation, um, the SEC, if, you know, if we could find a way to try that and try to find a semi-permanent spot and see if we can't grow this thing and continue to make it the marquee event of, of our sport in many ways, the SEC championship outshines, you know, the, the, the national championship just because of the crowds that we get. And, and the national championships to this point, hopefully if we keep plugging away at it in Fort Worth, it's, we're going to be able to market that and fill it up. It's a beautiful arena over there. But, but right now the SEC championship is the gold standard in terms of the environment and the, and the fun of experience, championship experience that those student athletes get. And, you know, putting it in a destination city like New Orleans is key to continuing that to grow, and I, I hope that we can look at trying to do something like that. The, you know, the basketball tournament's in the same place every year. The SEC football championships played in the same year, same place. They play the same place for the baseball tournament. You know, then they go to Omaha, same place. There, there's a reason those sports do that, and the consistency is what is what grows the exposure and the – ability to draw those crowds and I think we're missing the boat when we bounce around all over the place all the time. Connor said that Saturday was probably one of the most fun moments she's yeah. ever had in her life. Would you say that aspect of fun helps give this team the confidence they well, need? There's no question. There's no question. I mean, Olivia Dunn says it in our team meeting, we're at our best when we're having fun. Of course, the flip side of that is we're having fun when we're at our best, right? So it's like which came first, chicken or the egg, you know, kind of conversation. But, but I do think I do think when a team is loose and free of mind and fearless and and having a good time together, and that that's consistent with how they train and 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 how they compete all year long. I do think that that um, that's usually an indicator of a team that's in a good mental headspace. Um, you see a team that looks tight on their face or a team that looks a little too drawn down and a little too – now, you can go the other way and you can be too amped up and lose focus. So it's a fine line, but I, but I agree that, um, that that's a, an ingredient to our, our recipe, if we will. You know, we talked earlier about being Chick-fil-A everywhere we go. Well, part of our recipe is, is, uh, is having that fun and having that great experience and – and uh, Connor, you you know, she was sincere in that. I mean, uh, you could see it written all over her face. That that whole environment, like, and just the the outpouring of support that our fans gave us, that from the tailgate to in the arena, and then you know, once we won it, and the fanfare that went with that. I mean, these are these are things that are first time experiences for a freshman, you know, that are and for a lot of people on our team at that level. So it should bolster their confidence. It should be something they begin to crave and and want to continue to pursue, and I think we're seeing that. My first pitch was a miserable, epic fail. I, and I look, I, I, I got home from, I got off the bus and went into the gym and 
set up a little backstop for myself to see if I could get the old rag arm moving again. From I hadn't I hadn't stood on a pitcher's mound since I was in high school. I did, and I was fine. I was doing fine. Like you know, I was bringing it in at a solid forty-seven miles an hour or something. You know, and uh, but throwing throwing very accurately at about sixty feet and went over and one of the guys came out of the dugout and let me warm warm up a little bit and just play a little toss with him everything's fine and he comes over he goes you still got it coach you know and that kind of thing and i get on the mound and i threw a worm burner man it was it was it was rough so i hope i'll get a chance to redeem myself at one time you know you get one shot to make the show and and you blow it uh you know so i i don't know what to say the team was around me and i looked at them i'm like it's a good thing you guys don't have to depend on me right because uh I bounced one up there, and Rabelais texted me and uh, let me know that this is the pitch heard around the world. Yeah.